Good afternoon. Recently, we saw the release of the new iPhone. And part of the questions around the new iPhone, besides the technology, was what was it going to be called? Was it the new iPhone? Was it iPhone 5, 4S, G, whatever? Of course, we saw what we saw, the iPhone 5. And those questions were out there because we're used to labeling iterations, improvements of products and services that we offer. So I'd like to talk to you today about Leadership 4.0, a new approach to leadership for a new generation looking at tomorrow's organizations. And really that's what we're talking about when we're talking about Leadership 4.0, is really how will leaders face the challenges of leading tomorrow's organizations. Now, of course, to look at tomorrow's organizations, we need to think a little bit about what the organizations were like yesterday. Now, I remember the first time that I led a team in an organization. My vision for that team is that we would be operating on a smooth body of water. We'd all be rowing in sync with one another to get the mission accomplished. Now, me, like so many other leaders, learned that at some point, organizations don't really look like this. They really look like this. Organizations tend to have much more chaos, noise in them. And in fact, if you take a look at this picture, you really might see yourself and the waters that you're trying to navigate in your organization today. Now, when we think about the organizations of tomorrow, it's really just this on steroids. Organizations are chaotic. They're frenetic. We move at a fast pace. Peter Drucker once said that only three things happen naturally in organizations. Confusion, friction, and underperformance. Everything else requires leadership. Organizations are ever-changing with porous boundaries between work life, between home life, partners, clients, customers. We're really working in tomorrow's organizations in a huge challenge. And then if you look at the talent, the people that are in the organizations, the people that work for you, well, they're mobile. Not only are they mobile in terms of how they receive technology and how they receive information, they're mobile in terms of their job, and they don't see themselves working for one organization for the rest of their career. That's the challenge of the organizations of tomorrow, and that's why we need Leadership 4.0, that next generation of leaders and how we approach leadership in organizations. My name is Jim Bono and I'm a Vice President and Master Facilitator at Blue Point Leadership Development. And at Blue Point Leadership Development, we focus just on that, how to develop leaders to become more effective leaders for their organizations, their communities, everywhere that they're involved in. Now, what I want to do for you today is talk a little bit about what the leaders of tomorrow need in terms of their own development and how you might consider shifting some of your design considerations for the programs that you create. Now, if we look specifically at the learning objectives for our session today, the first thing I'd like to talk about is really gain an understanding of the evolving nature of organizations and leadership. Leadership 4.0 must mean that there were three others, so we'll take a look at those. We also want to talk about the skills and the competencies, the real abilities that successful leaders will require in order to lead these next generation of organizations. And then finally, we want to review some of the design considerations that we believe are essential when you create leadership development programs for leaders to develop their skills to meet the challenges of those organizations of tomorrow. Now, first off, let's take a look at this evolving nature of organizations and leadership. Again, if I'm talking about Leadership 4.0, what are the three previous iterations of approaches to leaderships in leading organizations? So if we take this starting generally from 1900 to 1980, we're talking in the post-industrial revolution age here. We like to think of that as really the time of the production systems leader. Leadership during those times was about how much product can we get out, how can we create new product to meet the growing demands, whether it was the world wars that we participated in in those times, whether it was the booming economies that resulted in the 50s and 60s, lots of manufacturing, lots of organizations, and they needed production system leaders to get product out the door. That's the first iteration of leadership in this post-industrial age. 
we think about the second iteration of leadership, again, generally from about 1980 to about 2000s, we like to think of that as the quality performance leader. You all know the terms of ISO 9000, the Black Belt, Six Sigma, all the quality initiatives that were really driven in organizations to get leaders to not only get product produced, but quality product produced. And leadership really did focus on what we can do to get quality into the organizations. Now, the third iteration of leadership we think of as the opportunistic enterprisers. And again, that would generally be from about 2000 to the present day. Now, if you think about with the emergence of the internet, the World Wide Web, the technologies that became available leading up to and during that time, leaders and organizations were encouraged to find where is the new business opportunity where we can take advantage of these new technologies. And leaders were told, you need to be an entrepreneur and treat your piece of the organization like your business. And that was the third iteration of leadership. We're moving into a new stage now, moving into something new in terms of organizations and those challenges. So of course the question is, what's next? What is the next iteration of leadership? We are referring to it now as Leadership 4.0. Now, in order to really begin to dive into the competencies and skills and what people need for that leadership, I'd like to take a look at the three big competencies that we see are critical for leaders as they begin to lead organizations into this new time and really adopting this stance of Leadership 4.0. The first competency is this, talent development. We know the impact that coaching and engagement has on employees within an organization. When a leader takes the time to coach an individual to develop the capacity to solve their own problems. The research indicates that we're talking 10 times increase in productivity, job satisfaction, ability to move successfully through the organization. So the question is, are your leaders talent developers? Are you, as a leader in this organization, someone that people come to in order to gain new skills, to receive coaching? Talent development is a critical competency necessary for leaders who want to be successful in this Leadership 4.0. The second competency that we look at when we talk about Leadership 4.0 is communication. Now, not just communication that provides us access to information, we're talking about communication that creates engagement, Cre communication that creates community, and communication that creates alignment throughout the organization. As we saw in that first picture where there was so much going on in the chaos of the organization, to get your voice above all of that chaos requires good communication skills. You need to get your voice above that noise so that people understand and want to get engaged in the organization and in the job that you provided for them. But it's not only about engagement, it's about how does your com communication create a sense of community within your team and in your organization? that sense that people care for each other, that there's appreciation, that groups work together to solve problems. Your communication can generate a sense of community within your organization. And then finally, how do you communicate to create alignment, to get people in your organization aligned to your vision of the future for your business and for the organization? The second competency there, communication, critical to success in Leadership 4.0. The third competency we believe is necessary to reach that place is leading change. There's no doubt that, and people say it all the time, change is a constant in today's organizations. Our leaders need to be able to continually not only change themselves and adapt, acquire new skills, adjust to ch changing business demands, but they need to lead others through the same process. Leaders must be first to the future in order to lead change successfully within organizations. So these three competencies, this idea of being a talent developer, of having communication that creates engagement, community, and alignment, 
And then finally, this competency of leading change throughout the organization are three critical competencies necessary to lead the organizations of tomorrow and to really become a leader in the 4.0 world. Now, the question is, if we think about how do we design classes, workshops, development experiences that really get these competencies to the forefront for leaders so that they can engage in activities, engage in learning that helps them know how to lead change, know how to communicate effectively, and most importantly, development opportunities to be talent developers for others. Now, at Blue Point Leadership Development, we approach the development of all of our workshop experiences using six key design considerations that we believe are critical in order to drive these competencies for leaders. What I'd like to do now is to introduce you to those six key design requirements and show you a couple of examples of how those design requirements play out in a typical workshop experience. Now, the first design requirement that we're going to look at is this idea that the workshop and development experiences need to be highly engaging and experiential. Now, again, if you remember that picture that I showed up front of all the chaos in the organization, you know, as trainers and people that do leadership, professional leadership development work, we have to get above this noise as well. And part of the reason that we like highly engaging and experiential workshops is because it gets the leader's attentions. We use pictures like this and ask people, where do you see yourself? Where do you see your organization here? And where do you see the problems and the opportunities that you're facing today? We get great dialogue to get people talking about that and engage the leaders where they are in their view of their organizations. Now, the second key design consideration for getting leaders to this place of Leadership 4.0 is that designed experiences must be leader-driven. What do I mean by that? The leader needs to take a stance in terms of what are the specific challenges, opportunities, the specific growth areas for that leader that they want to talk about within a workshop. At Blue Point Leadership Development, we like to think of the fact that we do real play, not role play, in any of our leadership development workshops. So leaders are tasked, before they ever get into the workshop, to identify three critical business issues that they want to work as a part of that training. They then can receive coaching on those. They can bring innovative challenges and, and, and get input from other people in the organization that are in the workshop in terms of how to approach those innovative challenges. So we're talking about the real challenges that the leaders face. I tell you, I've taught many workshops where at the end of the workshop, the leader says to me, you know, I expected to learn something here, but I didn't expect to move the business forward. But because we did real play, not role play, I actually found next steps to some of my most critical challenges. Now, they didn't get those, those next steps just from me. They got it from the community of people that are learning together in this experiential format in order to move the business forward and develop those competencies necessary for Leadership 4.0. The third design consideration that we suggest you take into account when you're designing leadership development programs is that the programs are feedback rich. I tell people that come into my classroom that whether you know it or not, you've signed an implicit agreement to receive feedback in a very public way over the course of this workshop. You're going to have an opportunity to receive feedback from me, feedback from your colleagues, maybe a 360 instrument so you'll be getting feedback from the people that you work with as well. One of the ways that we do that in many of our workshops is to provide leaders an opportunity to have coaching practicums, a time when they're sitting down with a colleague in the class and receiving coaching on a critical business challenge that that leader faces. They certainly receive feedback in the coaching conversation about how they might approach that challenge a bit differently, but the person giving the coaching will also receive feedback on how impactful, how helpful was that coaching in the moment? And what could that leader have done better in order to help that other person develop the capacity to solve their own problems? 
You know, the reality is that the generation that's using the Internet today is used to giving continuous feedback online, whether it's reviewing a restaurant, talking about a movie, talking about an organization that they work for. Feedback is a part of the online experience, and people are bringing that into work. We need to train our leaders to be able to effectively receive feedback, recognizing that the feedback's intention is only for the betterment of the organization and that particular leader. The fourth design consideration that we recommend for engaging leadership development experiences is that there are immediately usable approaches and skills given in the class. We don't talk about case studies. We want to get down to the specific skills that somebody can use and get them using those skills right away. Many of our classes, we approach this through the notion of a power tool, whether it's a coaching power tool, a communication power tool. We provide people immediately a tool that they can use to drive performance, and then we get them in a conversation about a real business challenge that they're facing. Again, all of these begin to build on each other. So they've brought a real challenge. It's real play, not role play. There's critical feedback involved whenever they're having an experience working that challenge and they can immediately use a tool that we provide, and if they're using it in the classroom, they'll be able to use it when they return to their jobs. The fifth design consideration that we believe is critical in order to create a successful leadership development experience is that the experience facilitates application of the learning immediately. And one way that we certainly do this is through coaching in the room. We want people to be able to engage in the skill immediately after we teach it, and we want them to engage in something that is a real business challenge for them. Now, as facilitators of that program, we want to facilitate the learning and the application of those skills. So if somebody is doing a coaching practicum with a colleague, we believe that facilitators can coach as the person is coaching not to coach the person that's receiving coaching, but the person that's giving the coaching. How can they better apply the skill and the power tools that we were just taught? Well, if you've got a professional there giving them feedback, providing them direction on how to use the skill, what you're offering is an immediate application of using the skill, and again, not in a case study area, but in something that will move the business forward today. The final design requirement that we believe is critical for successful leadership development experiences to get leaders to this place of 4.0 leadership is vivid media utilization. You know, the reality is, whether we like it or not, as trainers and facilitators creating an experience, we're competing with everything really from 3D movies to reality television. We have to adopt the use of images, of card decks, stickers, live interactive desktop where we're bringing training to a mobile device, to an iPad, to a Galaxy tab, to all different kinds of media and doing it live. We have to use audio and video that people recognize to drive home a point around how they can be more effective leaders, how they can use the skills that we're providing in the room to drive the business forward. Really, if you consider those six components together, we at Blue Point Leadership Development believe that a combination of these six engaged with leaders will help the leaders drive to this Leadership 4.0. This approach to leadership for a new generation, not only of talent, in the, in the, not only of talent that's coming into the organization, but a new organization itself. And by using this approach for your own development of leaders within your organizations, you'll be more likely to get, the, you, to get your leaders to be immediate in the use of the skills and the applications that you're teaching them in order to drive the business forward. I'd like to thank you for taking time to review this information. Again, my name is Jim Bono with Blue Point Leadership Development. You can reach me at bluepointleadershipdevelopment.com, and I'm happy to engage with you more around this conversation of what it takes to get leaders to a place of leadership 4.0. Thank you.